Hi everyone, welcome to my series, Finesse and Flair. Today my guest is the very spirited, very vivacious, very effervescent girl that I know. She's a multifaceted professional with a work history spanning over 19 years. A strong background in learning and development, customer service, hospitality, sales, performance development, and operations. She has been a successful voice and accent trainer, a content designer who has been recognized for her work over the years. She has also been the winner of May Queen Ball Beauty Pageant. She touches the hearts of every person she meets in the journey of her life. My heart-storming sessions with her are always the most special ones. So please welcome the dearest of all, the very special Kirat Sandhu Umre. Welcome, Kirat. Thank you, Bia. Thank you so much. And what wonderful words you have said for me. It's really making me feel nice. It had to because you're my one and only special sister. So had to be and it had to Again, like I always tell everybody on this show, it's always heartfelt. It's only people who mean a lot to me who are invited on this show. And you are, of course, the most special. So you had to be a part of this. Thank you so much. I've been watching all your shows and uh, you're doing such a brilliant job. And uh, I think when you said that uh, you were only inviting people who are very close to your heart, you're such a lovable person. I'm sure you must have had a list of people who were wanting to come on this uh, uh, episode with you. So I, yes, I know I'm your sister, but I'm still feeling so good uh, being a part of this. But I'm very nervous and I'll be very honest about <laughs> it. I'm extremely nervous. For once I'm making you nervous, I'm very happy about that. For once I've got you nervous. <laughs> okay. So Kit, as you know that this uh, particular session and the series that I started was based on people who I wanted, who have been very inspirational to my life in their own way. And who, of course, for me are very, very inspirational, not just as people, but are also amazing with their fashion, with their sense of fashion, with their sense of style, and of course, have a lot of finesse and flair. So since you know this is all about fashion, what is your quintessential style when we talk about fashion? Um, I think for me, uh, Bia, it is, uh, you know me the best. It's, um, it's a mix of Indo-Western. Um, I love wearing, uh, you know, stuff from Bunai um, or Farida Gupta. So I love my long kurtas. I... Um, only wear saris for my uh, corporate world uh, and work. So for me, it's um, a little on the loose side. It's comfort, but uh, I, I love bright colors and I love flowers. So if yes. you see my kurtas, they're all floral. Um, you see my uh, saris, they're all bright. So that's me, uh, Indo-Western kind of a person. Okay, great. Yes, I know that about you, but I want everybody else to know what your sense of uh, style is. Okay, now since I know and everybody else knows what your sense of style is, who is that one person that you look up to to inspire your sense of fashion or that one icon who you always look up to when it comes to fashion? Oh, without a doubt, I can just say Karina Kapoor. I think I've got a woman crush on that uh, lady, the way she carries herself, the way she dresses. I mean, be it, uh, uh, you know, Indian, be it Western, my God, she just looks so gorgeous. So for me, it has to be Karina Kapoor. I agree. And just before our call today, before this session, it was her husband's 50th birthday yes. yesterday. She has made the most beautiful video for her husband and captured each and every person who's important to him in his life, which I thought was so special and so wonderful. It was really, really nice. And yes, I totally agree with you. Her sense of, not just her sense of style, but the, you know, the way she carries herself, her attitude, the way she, the whole demeanor, her whole personality is just so stylish that I think everybody who kind of follows her is totally crazy about her sense of style. So totally agree with you on that one. Yes. Okay, so Kate, I know you're a, Big. You're a very, very avid reader. You've always been really fond of reading. You're, you've got a huge collection of books that you love. So what is that one book that you're reading right now? 
as we speak? Um, so there's no one particular book, but uh, one of my favorite uh, authors is uh, Anuja Chauhan. I've read all her books, but uh, um, I think after the session you had with her last time, I again uh, picked up the book, uh, The House That BJ Built. And uh, reading it for the nth time. So right now I am in the middle of uh, reading her book, The House That BJ Built. Oh, wow. I haven't, to be honest, you know me that I'm not much of a reader. But after, you know, having that one hour one on one chat with her after getting to know her better, I have definitely made up my mind. I have to read each and every book that she's written because I can so relate to her sense of writing now. After speaking to her, I can so well imagine what brilliant her books, how brilliant her books must be. So definitely have to get my hands on her books. You have to. They crack you up. They make you cry. They make you laugh. They are just so close to reality. And uh, they are, they are uh, for me, they're class apart. For me, she's been the best Indian author till uh, date. Wow. Yeah. I will tell her that now that I kind of am a little bit in touch with her. We'll definitely let her know that for sure. Please do that. Okay. So kids, so we all know that you have been in the corporate world for almost 20 years now. You're doing exceptionally well in the corporate world. I know that recently you were training the Uberoi group and you got a standing ovation from the whole group of Uberoi. And considering it's Uberoi, it means a lot. And I have seen you always excel in your field of work, whichever, uh, you know, corporate you have worked with. Today, I know you're working as, uh, uh, you know, with Chris Salis. At, uh, so do you want to tell us about your little bit about your journey in the corporate world? And yes, before you uh, start on that, also, you were a beauty pageant winner. You have been, um, you know, airline professional for a few years, and then you moved into the corporate journey. So tell us something, any exciting thing, anything you want to talk about, about your corporate journey. Um, so, yeah, when I look at the corporate journey, I actually feel old because 20 years just makes me uh, feel like, my God, which generation am I from? No, 20 uh, but, is not old. I finished 21. So you're definitely, we are not old. We're still young at heart. Yeah, I think 40 is the new 20. That's how Absolutely. I look at it. Yeah. So um, I started uh, uh, my career as a voice and accent trainer. And uh, um, I don't know, for some reason, I always stuck to the training, the learning and development world. And uh, I've uh, gone across the, uh, various uh, organizations. I've worked for Amex. I have worked for, uh, uh, you know, I've done a little bit of freelancing as well. But um, I think for me, my uh, corporate uh, journey uh, has been uh, phenomenal because uh, in the world of training, I think I've learned more from others rather than kind of trained and facilitated people. And I think every interaction I have, every session that I am in, um, I come back a richer person. So I think for me, if I have to, uh, in a nutshell, say how's been my corporate world, it's been one of the most enriching uh, experiences because I have just grown and learned every day. Wow. And uh, when I talk about uh, the aviation, I think you will really, uh, you know, know this well because of the amount of experience you have. It was a very short uh, time I spent uh, with the Virgin Atlantic. Uh, but again, absolutely wonderful. Loved meeting up with people. It was a nice journey. And um, I think for me, the best was that uh, I met my life partner there. And uh, moved on. I, I think so. I feel I just joined Virgin to meet him and then move away because move I was on to other things. Yeah. Wow. So I think coming back to the corporate world made me realize that um, training and development, learning and development is what my field is. And I've stuck to that. So now, yes, it's going to be close to 20 years. I've loved every bit of it. Amazing. I love the way you said that you come back as a richer person with every training that you're going for. I think that's something I can relate to very closely because when I go for my trainings, I, I don't do as many corporate trainings as you do, but I do some mm -hmm. corporate trainings as an image consultant on image management. And when I do also one on one consultations with my girls who are probably going for a pageant or even a client who comes to me for help, the uh, you know, at the end of every person that you meet you feel that they might have learned a lot from you 
but there's also something that you always learn from them at the end of the day so i think that was very very rightfully said we as trainers also end up enriching ourselves and learning from people all the time which is so so true i yes. totally agree with you on that yes so one last question before we move on to the fun parts of fitness and flair what is that one quote that you live by all the time um i think for me one of the things which stuck in my mind is uh, something which uh, the managing director of my current uh, organization sheila watson singla once said that uh, life is very short to live live being yourself and not trying to copy others wow and i think that is so me, true that just stuck in my mind that uh, you know anyways you don't know what tomorrow holds for you so rather than trying to be competitive and beating other people and trying to be like them just live what you are as a person so i think for me that has really stuck to my mind that's amazing i believe in that as well that each one of us is a unique person each one of us has something special about ourselves and god has created you for that unique speciality that you have so you must treasure it you must value it and not try and ape others and copy others that is so so true yeah absolutely so now yeah. let's get to the fun bit of it so i've recently started this i've started a fun uh, you know rapid fire round okay which is interesting it's mostly most of the questions are kind of centered around fashion so a okay. few questions that i'm going to ask you centered around fashion So what is more important for you western or indian indian any day for you yes is it formal or casual a mix i like sometimes wearing saree sometimes very very formal uh, indian outfits but sometimes it's like a you know like a patiala salwar with a short kurta okay lounge wear or sweat pants uh for me sweat pants <laughs> okay uh, glamorous or casual There are days I like to be glamorous, so I think between the two, I'd like to go for that. Okay, and tell me anybody who you feel has uh, either you have been to a fashion fashion par uh, fashion for par, or you feel that somebody else, while you know you met them, you were socializing with them, they went through a fashion uh, fashion for par that you would like to talk about. Okay, I have to say it was me. I'd gone for this uh, training to Udaipur, and uh, I had recently bought this beautiful pink linen sari. And I think, in a hurry, I did not put in the color which should have matched with the the petticoat color should have matched with the sari. Okay. So when I took my outfit out one day previous, I realized I was carrying a black petticoat to wear under a linen pink sari, and you could just see through that. So I was like. this cannot be happening to me so i actually roamed around the streets of udaipur to find a matching color to my sari and that is when i wore it so for me that was one of the biggest for five ever done not matched my sari and just kind of put my stuff in a suitcase and said let's just go never again after that i promised myself but i think uh, speaking of this this is something i learned from anuja chohan session remember where she said that she doesn't wear petticoats so yes. you know when something like this happens try and be innovative try and or just try or you could have just probably have, i would have gone ahead with a black petticoat with a pink sari and said this is the new me and this is the new quirky me or whatever so so there are always ways in these like you dealt with it where you actually went and got a petticoat but then if push comes to shove there are different ways of dealing with it as well so yes. you know if you have if you in case you haven't noticed uh, kit on this whole episode this is the 12th episode of fitness and flair so i have come up with this uh, kind of self inflicted theme mm. where i always wear black or white yes. with pearls so i've always yes. a lot of people probably might be thinking that oh my god does she, why, why doesn't she wear colors why is she always wearing black because it's always black or white because that's something i wanted to come up as a you know like a theme kind of a thing for this yeah. so what is you what do you go by is it black or white for you what do you prefer oh black makes me look so thin any yeah. day I agree, and I I know that you're a fan of pearls as well because you're wearing your pearls. So absolutely, I'm a big fan of pearls. You'll see me in pearls all the time. So do you like flats or heels? I love heels. Unfortunately, can't wear them, but uh, I would any day like to wear heels. Okay, and uh, anybody in today's day and age who thinks um, who needs a makeover straight away? Oh. 
I think loads of them, as for me, the first person who comes to your mind. Um. Oh God, this is this is going to be a little. Uh, um. I I actually would say I love. Uh, I wish I could say it for all the politicians of our country. I agree. Totally agree on that. Yeah. So I would like to put not one. I wouldn't want to name one person, but the group politicians. I wish we could just do a makeover for them and get them to dress a little better. Yeah, they can get in touch with me as an image consultant. Yes, please do. <laughs> I think that would be wonderful. I should tell them. Please go and connect with Via. <laughs> okay. So tell me, what is the first thing that you notice about women in terms of like when you meet them for the first time or you're seeing somebody for the first time? What is that one thing that you always notice about women? I think yes, for me, it's what they're wearing and how comfortable they are in it. With themselves. You could be yes. You could be wearing the best of. For things, but if you're not comfortable, it's going to show. So for me, it's what you're wearing and how comfortable are you. Great, awesome. Thank you so much, Kira. Thank you so much for taking out time, and thank you so much for coming on my series. Thank you, Bia. And uh, I, I would just like to end by saying that you are doing such a brilliant job. Um, not only me being your sister, but I know a lot of my friends who wait for your episodes to come out. They wait for your posts, and uh, you know they always message me and say your sister is doing such a fab job. So I just want you to keep doing it because you're touching so many lives you just um, you know your uh, i i will say the name which you kept the finesse and flair it so suits you because your finesse and your flair and your uh, uh, talent for fashion is is just par excellence and you 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 using that to encourage people to come out and be comfortable in their own skin so i think that is a brilliant job you're doing and thank you for having me over and uh, i will say that this has been one of the toughest uh, interviews for me and in spite of the fact that i think i've trained close to 10000 15000 people and you train now. them on communication and public speaking <laughs> yes but uh, uh, you know being interviewed by my sister who's the best in uh, the image consulting industry i think it, i i was very nervous and i i'm, I'm quite sure people who will see the video will realize that i was thank you so much kate thank you so